everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I am here with Nikki Kinzer. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. How are you? It's a fantastic day. It's a good, good, solid Monday. The rains have come, and they are washing the debris from the streets. Right. Things are smelling better and growing. The foliage is is <laughs> ripening. April the colors showers are going to be rich. means May flowers. Uh, it's coming. Uh, Spring uh, is coming. Uh, I know. I, and I'm, it's gloomy. It is definitely gloomy. You walk out, but yeah. I'm looking f- to change that mindset. And that's what we're talking about today. Yes, it is. I'm very excited about it. Uh, before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list. And we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. Now, we don't have an opening question this week, do we? No, we do not, but we certainly want them. So if somebody has a question that they're interested in hearing our opinions and thoughts on, please send them to us because we'll include it into the show. That's right. It would go right here. It would go right here it's as like we're a pointing. Mad Lib. Yes. It's a podcast Mad Lib. You submit the segment. That's right. We'll talk about we'll it. We'll talk about it. Uh, how should they submit those things to us? Oh, they can send it to info at TakeControlADHD.com. Or questions. Or questions. Questions at TakeControlADHD. Either one. That actually exists. Yes, questions. You're right. Questions at TakeControlADHD. Yeah. And you and I both get that email. So we do. That would be fantastic. That's, you know what? Yeah. Scratch the info yeah, and don't just do, that. do questions. That's yes. yes. Questions at. That's where we. That's where you should send it. And we'll put All that right. in the show notes. Make it really easy. Why not? That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, We're going to talk about a growth mindset today. This has been on the calendar for a little bit. It's been jockeyed around. We've moved some things around based on what some other people have have been submitting and questions and things that have inspired you. But it landed today. And I would like to know where this came from for you. Why the growth mindset conversation? Well, it first came from uh, my daughter, is is really Mm -hmm. the first time I ever paid attention to what a growth mindset was, because... I probably have heard it in passing, but I never really studied it or researched it. But uh, yes, one day she comes home. She's in the third grade and uh, she shouts to me in the hallway, I can do hard things. <laughs> and she's like so proud of herself. And I'm thinking, that's fantastic, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> the enthusiasm was fantastic. I'm like, that's great that you can do hard things. And then she went on to kind of talk about how her teacher was explaining what a growth mindset was. And she, you know, explained it to me. And I thought it was great. And every once in a while, she would catch me because she'd be like, Mom, that is not a growth mindset. You can do this. Oh, right. She would yeah. actually start catching me. Uh, limiting my beliefs. You get school. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I definitely did. And then this last November, um, I went to a Chad conference, as we've talked about, and there was a keynote sp- speaker who spoke around uh, what a growth mindset was versus a fixed mindset. So it was one of the key notes. And it was so interesting to me how it really related to limiting beliefs and ADHD and how we could take this and roll with it. I don't know what else to say, mm-hmm. but, you know, just to kind of, this is information that we need to to learn about and know about. And so much of the work and the research uh, that I did for this show and what I've been learning is from Dr. Carol Dweck. And she is a researcher at Stanford University. Uh, and she has dedicated her career for over 30 years um, on student attitudes about failure. And what she found is that some students rebounded very quickly and they were fine. You know, okay, they didn't do well on a test, but they were able to to uh, make up for it or do better. But then there were some students who were just devastated um, by even the smallest setbacks. And so she wanted to kind of see what the differences were between the two students or the two types of students. And eventually she coined this term growth versus, you know, fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And if you believe 
that your mind can grow and you can learn, then you behave differently. She talks about it in her book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And, you know, we don't talk about this part all that often, but we do have Audible as a sponsor of this very show. And if you were to visit, I'm just saying, audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast, and you set up a new account there, then you can download this book for free, the audiobook version of this book. And you can cancel your account if you don't like Audible after that, and you can cancel it and keep the book forever and ever. All you have to do is, again, audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast and search for Mindset, the New Psychology of Success and uh, you'll be able to start your trial and get the book for free. It's like 10 hours, I think, 10 hours. And uh, yeah, it's 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 nice and beefy. 10 hours and 23 minutes, that audio book uh, uh, narrated by Bernadette Dunn. Mm. So if you are a if you are a follower of narrators, as I am, Scott Brick is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then you will love Audible. I absolutely love it. We'll also put the link to the Kindle version of the book uh, if you are so interested as well. So there you go. Audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast. There you go. Okay. She also, Let us continue. Well, and she also has a website that we'll put in the show notes as well, which is called mindsetworks.com. And there's a lot of information about that as well. Perfect. Um, so definitely check that out. So one of the things that I noticed when I was doing the research is that much of it is is really geared towards children, right? They really are looking at how students learn and what they think. And, and that is probably why my daughter in third grade came home and said, I can do hard things. Mm -hmm. Because when you have that message early on, that's what you carry on. That's that's what mm -hmm. you believe. Um, but I also think it's very relevant to adults, and I think it's very relevant to adults with ADHD. So that's where I want to start is actually talk to you a little bit about the definitions first so people can understand what I'm talking about. And we're going to start with the fixed mindset. I This one really hit me, especially in the context of what you just said, right? The thing that you start with is the thing that you live with, because it's very rare that you hear a diagnosis that says you have ADHD and you can do hard things. Right. Like those two things don't go together often. It's no. like you have ADHD. Now, what are we going to do to accommodate you to help make the world a, a little bit easier for you to adapt to? That's right. It, it is not about you facing the hardest things in life. No. So wouldn't it be great, though, if that's if that changed? Yes. Oh right. You got that diagnosis. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you have ADHD, but you can do hard things. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So, and you're going to face it and you're going to, you're, you're going to be just with fine. It, and it's going to, it's going to do some great things for you. Right. It'll also pose challenges that you'll face and get over. Right. You'll get through it. Every day will be another chance for you to do hard things. Yeah. Definition of growth mindset right there. So, yes, let me go and talk about fixed mindset first. So, a fixed mindset is going to believe that intelligence is static. Uh, and this is where, oh, you're so smart is not always a great thing to say because when, especially with kids and, and probably adults too, um, when you are telling somebody that they're smart, then what you're doing is you're, you're making a judgment on their intelligence level and that they're kind of stuck in that. Like if I'm so smart, but I didn't do well, then I guess I'm not that smart. So it sets up this expectation that um, if they ever do fail, then they feel like, oh, well, I'm, I guess I'm not as smart as I thought I was kind of thing. So it keeps the intelligence static. And of course, the desire is to look smart. And so they have a tendency to avoid challenges because you mm. don't want to not look smart. So if something looks... Right. You don't want to have your intelligence challenged in any sort of public forum. Exactly. So you're not you're going to avoid the challenge altogether if you can. Uh, when obstacles strike, they're going to give up easily because, again, they don't necessarily want to look like they don't know or they're struggling. I mean, they're struggling and they don't know what to do with it. And so they give up. They don't see how your effort can affect your results. If, you know, they, they don't necessarily see the connection of, well, if I study and learn more, I, that's going to affect my results if I work hard. But for them, they don't see how the connection of effort has to do with their results. 
Oh, that's a that's a really good point. And I think it's one of the things we're trying to at least I'm trying to adjust the way I talk about, you know, smart and use the word smart, because it's often smart is completely disconnected from accomplishment. Right. Right. And achievement and achievement implies you work hard and you did something that's going to change something for you. Right. You're adding a new neurons. You're you're accomplishing a goal that you set for yourself. I, I really I, I'm really connecting with this. Uh, intelligence being static thing. Like, I, I think that's another thing that we're getting over if we if we try to replace smart with another word that's, you, you know, you're accomplished. You did something great. It implies action. Uh, and I'm, I'm really connecting with that. Yeah. Well, and what happens, okay, just a couple more key note or key points about this is when they do do something, they ignore the negative feedback mm-hmm. because they're not looking at it as a learning opportunity. They're maybe getting defensive or they want to um, prove their point more or whatever. So they're ignoring the negative feedback and they often feel threatened by the success of others. Because mm-hmm. what did I do wrong? Why are they doing better than me? You right. know, there's a lot of questions that go around that. So as a result, they plateau early. Um, a, a fixed mindset is going to plateau early and they're going to achieve less than their full potential. And you can have different areas in your life where you have a fixed mindset. So it's not like you're a fixed mindset on everything. It's just that you could have certain areas where you just really don't believe that you can learn something. Mm-hmm. So it's not all or nothing. This whole idea that, um, you know, context is everything, right? There right. doesn't, you know, you may have learned a behavior that comes from a, a potentially negative experience in your past that triggers uh, a, a relationship with a concept or a, a class or, yes. um, you know, a, a project at work um, where otherwise you might be incredibly open and growth minded. uh, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and one of the things that the keynote speaker did is he asked us, okay, pair up with whoever's next to you and talk about a specific situation where you have a fixed mindset. Yeah. And so it was really interesting to hear and people would kind of share their results, but it was really interesting to hear what people talked about like this, you know, I have this fixed belief about this or that or whatever. And so, um, The more that I started learning about this, I really did see a very clear connection between limiting beliefs and fixed mindsets, right? There's a lot of common uh, language that we're using here. So if you don't believe you can learn something, you're probably right. You're not going to learn it. What you believe and how you talk about yourself or to yourself really matters. It really does make a difference. If you don't believe it, then you're going to avoid the challenge of learning something new. And then there's that incredible fear that you may fail. Right. Right. And then it may be too hard and you won't be good at it anyway. So here's that limiting belief that, well, I've tried this a million times. I can't change. It's never going to be any different. So these thoughts and these fixed mindsets keep us stuck. They keep us stuck from going forward or making any kind of progress in our lives. Right, right. That's all the negative stuff. That's the negative stuff. So now we have to figure out how to make the turn. Yes. Right? The turn from fixed to growth. Growth. Plant a seed. Watch it flourish. Yes. Plant a seed. So growth mindset, what does this mean? It's basically the opposite of everything I just said. Intelligence can be developed. So you can learn things. You can, Mm -hmm. you know, you can consume information and become an expert on that by learning it, Uh, which leads people to want to learn because they understand that they can. They have the capacity in their brain to keep learning new things. And they're naturally creating milestones upon which they can, you know, slingshot to new plateaus. Absolutely. Which leads them to embrace challenges. Right. So if you're working on something with your ADHD and you really want to see Uh, some changes and some differences, you're going to embrace the challenge of doing something different than what you've been doing. You're going to be open to hearing that uh, a new strategy and being able to uh, practice it and and learn from it. Uh, You're going to persist in face of setbacks. So say that it didn't go exactly as planned, but that's not going to get you down. You're going to keep persisting. 
and and working on it. And it's and, and a growth mindset definitely sees the connection between effort and the path to, to mastery. So they know if I work at this, if I learn, if I do my best, then I can become really good at this. I can I can do something with this. There's a there's a connection to that. I wonder if you pulled out of of the reading because I have yet to read the book. But the the question I have is how do you how do you fix that first experience? Because it sounds to me like all of these things, intelligence can be developed, which leads to want to learn, which leads to embrace challenges. Uh, all of those things require some sort of of experience that you are acknowledging uh, was a success in those areas. And I think a lot of people, especially with ADHD, have trouble seeing those little successes. You know what I mean? Like in order to create a model of success that you can work towards so that when you hit fa- setbacks, you you don't say, well, I'm never going to be able to do that again. Instead, you say, you I know, I can what? do hard things. I can do hard things. I have taken this and turned it around in the past. Therefore, I'll be able to take it and turn it around now, even though I have not done it successfully this time, next time may be, might be different. Right. Um, right. You sort of have to create a catalog of successes first. Well, you you can. I mean, I mean, we've talked about this before. Having a success journal is probably one of the best things you can do um, to catalog those yeah. successes, right? Because totally. you want to be able to remember them because you're not going to remember them. But it's also going to be really hard for somebody who's not who is just by themselves, you know, listening to our podcast. How am I going to catalog that? Like they don't ha- maybe they don't necessarily have anybody pointing them, pointing out the successes, right? Because they don't see them themselves. And so it's, it's difficult. Um, I think it's important. You know, we've talked about this too. Every step is important, no matter how small it seems. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to us and just having the awareness of I see that this area is fixed in my life and I really do want to move it to a growth mindset. Um, I don't know if you necessarily have to have a list of successes to do that already, but I do think you need to be aware that that's where you want to go instead, that you're not Mm -hmm. okay with just settling on the fixed mindset, that you really do want it to be different. You know, I guess the only thing I I would add to that is you have to be open to signals in the world around you, right? I mean, if you are if you're hearing this message and it's hitting you sideways at all, maybe that's a reason you should look more clearly at it and more soberly at it. That this is this is a thing in my life that I I probably need to um, I need to assess. I need to be open. And maybe you didn't even know that this was happening until now it's being explained, right? Right. So, um, and I think that with, you know, just a couple of things with the growth mindset that is still, again, opposite of what the fixed mindset is that we learn from criticism and we find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Um, So, yes, they go to higher levels of achievement. And this, I think, really resonated with me. It gives them a sense of free will. So what do you think, what does that mean to you when you hear it gives them a sense of free will? Well, it means to me that I've accomplished things in the past and that I can use those experiences to take on, uh, to, to take any path in front of me now. I have the tools and, and the experience to know that I can learn new tools that will allow me to achieve anything I want to do moving in any direction that I want to, to go. For me, I would describe it as I have a choice. I have the freedom to choose. I can... I don't have to stay in a fixed mindset if I don't want to. I can change that. Um, If there's something that I'm working towards and I want to keep working on that and I know that it's, you know, it's the journey to get there. It's not just the outcome then. it, But it's my choice. And I think that as soon as we get our give our choices away and we feel like we can't do something, then we really lose our power. And so that's why that really resonated with me because I want people to feel empowered. I want them to feel like they have a say in their life. They have a, they control, you know, not their destiny. I don't want to necessarily say, 
<laughs> that. But you know what I mean? That, you know, well, it's not out not, of your control. Yeah. And they're not giving in to the resistance. You know, we talked about two weeks ago. That's the fixed mindset, right? That's that's very much the, the resistance. So kind of taking this to the next step is how do we learn to shift to that more growth yeah. mindset, right? I mean, especially right. in navigating ADHD. And um, one of the most important messages that I received at the Chad conference, and again, I never thought of it this way, is that people spend too much time on the performance, on how they're going to perform, Mm -hmm. and so much on the outcome, but they're not spending enough time in the learning zone. Talk more about that. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to give you an example, and he used athletes as an example, and I think it's it's uh, it's a it's a good a good example. Their game is the performance, right? Like their game is them performing. So if mm-hmm. it's a basketball game, football game, um, tennis match, whatever, their performance is the game. But where do they spend all of their time learning and practicing? Yeah, right. Every day right. for hours. And even the best athletes have coaches and they're still practicing their game every single day. Right. So Stephen or Stephen Curry, Stephen yeah. Curry, how is, <laughs> okay. what's his name? I, do you know who you're, uh, who you should be asking? Not LeBron this guy. James. Yeah. Yeah. You should be asking LeBron James. I know that name. <laughs> LeBron James. Yeah. Right. Okay. Could be argued one of him. the best basketball players in the world. That's right. He's still practicing. Yes. He still has a coach. It tells them what right. to do. <laughs> right. Not that, but you know what I mean. But but that's the point is that these athletes, these performers, like, and he also used another um, example of like a ballet dancer or somebody that's on Broadway. It's like they're, you know, they do their performance, but they're really spending their time in the learning zone. Mm-hmm. And uh, with ADHD, if you're thinking about, you know, I really want to uh, change something or really want to work on something, their measure of success is the outcome. So if I succeeded, I got an A on the test. Um, if I, I only succeed, if we are never late again to another meeting, right. or if you're always only looking for the direct outcome, that becomes sort of a fixed mindset. Again, because yeah. there's no room for success outside of just winning the game. Well, you can be very successful and have a great experience. And maybe it hurts because you didn't win the game, but you did your best and you learned from it and you're going to keep trying. You're going to keep doing your best. I, I think that's one that uh, that I struggle with, too. And I think that's a, a lot of that is our culture, right? We've embedded this, you know, studying for the test mentality, right? We practice for the game mentality and and not integration, right? What we're talking about, the, the growth mindset is an integrative mindset. It's one where I'm not just studying for the test. The test is an assessment to see how much I have been able to integrate new information into my life, right? We talked a little bit about this on the mind mapping episode, right? Why do we learn new things? things after we get out of school uh, so we can accomplish new things, right? We don't learn to be assessed later. We learn to grow. To actually and, learn, and, right. Right, right. We play to improve. And uh, in many respects, you know, the game is just another assessment of how well you've been practicing to grow. And yes, we have built up the games uh, to be uh, vastly more uh, sort of uh, uh, <laughs> economically powerful. Right. Uh, but but it's the it's the same sort of thing in my head, at least. I'm, yes. Yeah. Sort of I agree. The way I see it. I agree. Uh, so to be in a growth mindset around navigating your ADHD, a couple of things that I want to point out is you want to reflect, experiment, practice, and continue to be in the learning zone. So there are going to be times where you're going to feel like your ADHD is very managed, you're doing great, the systems are working, and then something kind of happens and you're off the rails. You know, that's the time, again, where you want to experiment, practice, continue being in that learning zone. Don't take it personally in the sense that you have failed or you've done something wrong. The ADHD got in your way, life got in the way, some kind of, you know, thing happened and now you have to adjust. So we want to keep being in that learning uh, zone and expecting that mistakes are going to happen. And that's okay. Expecting that consistency isn't going to always be there. 
and you know that's okay um and except you know just that you know you we've talked about this too but it's it's understanding how your ADHD affects you accepting that and then really working on how you're going to navigate it what do you do next and uh, be you know this is something that he said in the uh in this in the speech, he said, be passionately curious. I can get better. So it's not only can I, you know, I can do hard things, but I can get better at this and uh, keep learning and keep practicing and figuring out what works for you. I love that. I love that. And I love that because that actually uh, takes us into this this uh, sort of position of, of language and how important language, how powerful language is to uh, allowing us to cultivate a growth mindset. It's so true. So he talked about ambiguous language versus growth mindset language. And I have three examples for you. So let's work hard is ambiguous. Let's work to improve is a growth mindset. So we're looking to improve. And, I, you know, now that I say that out loud, let's work hard kind of yeah. seems weird, right? Because we're talking about yeah. <laughs> you have to put in the effort. But maybe it's because it's not it's not let's work hard to improve. It's like it's stopping at the let's work hard. So we're saying, you know, let's work to improve, which is also putting in hard work. I think that's why it's ambiguous. That's interesting. Um, I I uh, I wonder. For me, it, the way it hits me is both of those actually imply the the negative other side of that coin. Let's let's work hard to improve because you're not good at this right now. And I'm thinking about it. You know, obviously not from an adult ADHD perspective exclusively, but you know how I hear that as as a kid uh, too. That that's that I know that's how my son would take it. And he is, has an emotional maturity that's still definitely on the, you know, the no, upward that's, path. That's a good point. I mean, cause yeah, when you're talking about let's work to improve, it does, it kind of insinuates yeah. that, that uh, something's not right. But the next yeah. example I think is, is really good. Like where this one, I think the example itself is a little bit ambiguous. The next example I think is really solid and you can, totally see the difference. Right. So you can do it is ambiguous. Focuses on the 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 thing, the right. event. You can learn it is growth mindset. Focuses on integration. Right. I love it. That yeah. I love. Yeah. And I like the third one too. So we're going to scratch the first one, everyone. <laughs> now that we've talked about it out loud, we don't like that example. That's how we roll here. That's Pete. how we roll. That's right. <laughs> this is why we have this conversation. That's right. Uh, so the, the third one that we like is you're so smart, again, is ambiguous. Mm -hmm. um, and then they used, I, I see you have this. What's next? which is a growth mindset. But I would add that I would like to acknowledge that they have worked hard and I've seen the effort that they've put into this and uh, great job. What's next? Mm -hmm. So I just think for me, I would acknowledge the the effort that they mm -hmm. did put into it. Great accomplishment. Um, you you learned a hard thing. You faced a hard thing. Yep. And and I would say as a caveat to all of these, the answer to the question, what's next, it might just be a nap. Exactly. And that's totally OK. A break. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's OK, right. too. I'm going to face right. down this nap head on. <laughs> and it's going to be good. That's right. <laughs> so well, takeaways for today. I hope that people um, have resonated with some of this, you know, maybe spread some awareness around what these mindsets are. Definitely check the work of Dr. Carol Dweck. And, uh, you know, you take this opportunity to think about, you know, is there a habit or something that you would like to work on? And do you have a fixed mindset around it? And how is this affecting you from moving forward? Um, and, you know, just be thinking about those things and, and practice and try something new and, uh, in the last part of the the uh, session, the keynote session, he he had written, you know, what did I learn? What will I do? And who will I become? And I just think that's really it's really nice. What did I learn? What yeah. will I do? And and who will I become? And 
Those are good questions. Yeah. God, what a lovely summary, Nikki Kinzer. I have learned a lot and and uh, thank you for this. What a good time, uh, good timing for this particular message. You are so welcome. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We sure appreciate you taking the time and giving us your attention over this last few minutes. Uh, if you haven't, check out our uh, patron community over at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. You can uh, join for a couple of bucks a month and get access to our Discord community of other folks who are living with ADHD and celebrating the growth mindset. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>